Have you noticed a flux in the type of writing that you used to do from before? Because I feel like you used to, I mean, I think you're a pretty young guy. You're 26? Seven. 27. Okay. So do you ever remember going to blogs? A little in what sense? Well, it used to be in the beginning of the internet. Like there was no like place. You wouldn't have feeds, right? So now you open up some Facebook, Instagram, whatever they have you. And you just look at a feed. It used to be you think like, oh, I want to go to Noah Kagan's blog. Mm. And that, that's how you read it. And now I don't think I really read blogs anymore. Is, is, this a, is this a thing that you're seeing? Or do you continue to read blogs or mainly like small tweet size things? I spend some time reading small tweet size things. I mean, a decent amount of time. But no, I spend a lot of time reading blogs. Um, mm. I love nothing more in life than finding a writer, whether they're, they've written books, whether they're bloggers, and just pouring through the the blog archives i love doing that now i do think that there was an era of blogging that is continued now by like tyler cowan and marginal revolution which is like very bite-sized posts and i think that that era is gone i never participated in that era i basically didn't read and wasn't interested in ideas for like till i was like 21 like i just like, you know those books that you're supposed to read in middle school and high school? I didn't read a single one. Mm -hmm. Not one. Mm -hmm. And so that whole era, I just didn't participate in. But now there's people like Tim Urban and there's people who, like Ben Thompson, who write these more longer form pieces. And I love just binging that stuff. Hmm. So this is something I've been thinking about a lot because I've noticed the way I write. Uh, someone that works in my company, she was like, I don't think you've written a blog post in a long hmm. time. I've, I've, I've made YouTube videos, I've made podcasts, I've yeah. made tweets, I've made social media stuff. Haven't really made a blog post in a while, which is kind of funny for someone who calls himself a writer. Right. And I think there's like this compression of information that's been happening mm -hmm. ever since. And I'm not saying it's good or bad, but it used to be like a book. A book was where you got information just because the distribution of it was hard. Everything had to be packed into one book because right. you got one shot at it. Then it became like magazines, then newspaper columns, blogs, then Twitter. And then people started videoizing those things into reels, Instagram stories, TikTok. Um, where do you see this going? Like the compression of information? Do you see the information expanding again, like long blog posts? Or do you see it just being everything's tweets now or tweet threads? Both. Yeah. So what you have is your average or median consumer is going towards more and more compressed ideas. But at the same time, there's podcasts that are two to three hours long that people absolutely adore. And there are still times where I want to read long form. And also the most mileage I've gotten out of the things that I've made has been from long form. 15, 20,000 word essays where I spend four to six months of my life just inhabiting a single idea and then beginning to express that and yeah in terms of sheer reads in terms of sheer page views sometimes they get more but i think that what really matters is that the people who read through all those they develop a kind of relationship with you that can't be developed through short form bites um, and so ultimately i think that the answer is both and yes it's true that i think the median consumer of information, their attention span is maybe getting shorter. Like a lot of these cliches I think are true, but at the same time, it is sort of continually shocking to me how essays that I've written like Peter Thiel's religion and what the hell is going on, they still bring in people. I mean, I just wrote a piece about the liberal arts at 17,000 words, and I've now like sort of clustered with this galaxy of people who are who want to create new liberal arts schools and that happens because of the depth and the multifaceted nature of that post which admittedly was probably a little too long <laughs> uh, that's totally true when you say that because some of our top performing like seo articles are mm -hmm. long articles i wrote five years ago yeah. and still to this day continue to bring in hundreds or thousands of visits per day and also get email signups and sales, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Whereas I've written some viral tweets and uh, no one knows about them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like they're, they're just gone in the ether. Well, it's because just the, the, the form of Twitter is more ephemeral. And so I guess as, as things get longer, 
The thing is, you want to just match the length of what you're writing to the femorality of the platform. So you don't want to write long form essays on Twitter. And when you publish something on your blog, you want it to last the test of time. I always say 10 years. I want the things that I post on my blog to be just as relevant 10 years from now as they are today. And then when I publish a book, it'll definitely be held to that standard. Hmm. What about uh, the curiosity when you write, where are you finding ideas? Do you have a file or is there like a Google doc that called David Perel's ideas? Um, wh what do you do for creativity? Yeah, so in a way, my whole life is an answer to that question. And so there's a lot of tax that we can take on this. I think very practically, I am very deliberate about note taking. So my business partner is Tiago Forte. He runs a course called Building a Second Brain, took it in 2017, it just changed my life from just being able to be somebody. I remember I used to walk around New York City with all these ideas as I was walking. I'd sit down at a Starbucks and I would look at my computer and all my ideas would just disappear. It was as if my brain had gone blank and I was like in the movie 50 First Dates when she loses, Drew Barrymore I think loses her memory every single day. That's how I felt. Yeah. And so what I did was I said, hey, let me focus on notes, use that so that I can write from abundance in instead of scarcity. What I was trying to do was sit down with a blank white sheet of paper and say, okay, David, snap my fingers, can ideas come? And I basically inverted that. I said, you know what, I'm gonna just take a bunch of notes and then whenever I get stuck, I'll draw from those notes. And through that, I push through my writer's block and I can basically always, if I'm stuck with something, take notes, compile them, and then write from that abundance, sort of build off the notes into something that reflects my own voice and these emergent ideas that come from spending more time with the, the ideas of others or my own observations as I capture notes as I move through town or whatever. Hmm. And you take all these, I mean, I've, I've listened to your stuff about it. It seems like Notion is like a pretty big uh, part of your note taking, right? Yeah. So we do our team our team note taking and SOPs in Notion. Mm -hmm. And then I predominantly just use Evernote. It, it's, it's not a great platform, but it just works well enough that I'm like, you know what, I'll stick with it. 